Hello friends, my name is Henrik Palmgren. Welcome, this is Red Ice Radio. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to focus on a somewhat unusual subject, but an interesting one nonetheless. In the past, we've talked a lot about films and specifically about movie symbolism and the occult aspects of how certain movies can and will influence you and affect you emotionally. We are going to look at this from another point of view today and talk about something called scene deepening techniques and empathy techniques that can be used to help give characters emotional depth, an approach that screenwriters, novelists and playwrights can use to help maybe reach millions of people with their stories. David Freeman is based in Los Angeles. He is teaching something called Beyond Structure. And we are going to spend an hour talking about something he is behind called Emotioneering, a combination of emotion and engineering. We'll talk about a few example clips that we've linked up on our website to help along in this process. So we encourage you to be online and logged in at redicecreations.com as you listen to this program as we address how to create empathy and emotional depth in characters and how important it is to speak to the subconscious in this process. We also tie together with architecture. It's a craft, it's an art, and as you know, many call it magic. Welcome to Red Eyes Radio, David Freeman. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your time today. We know that you're very busy, but we're curious to uh, talk with you about the work that you do and get into some of the things that you've been working on in terms of uh, films and, and games and specifically something called uh, emotioneering. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the work uh, that you do, uh, David? Okay, thank you. By the way, as a person who does a lot of speaking, there is one rule of giving presentations, and that is to never apologize for everything. So I'm going to throw that cliche away and begin with an apology. I'm a little sleep deprived <laughs> as we begin this interview. Uh, what is the early morning for me here in Los Angeles? Because this year in particular has seen me doing a lot of speaking around the world. And in fact, I'm off from Los Angeles to speak in Amsterdam, catching a plane in a few hours and was up quite late preparing for that trip. So <clears throat> there may be pregnant pauses in this interview where people listening may think that I'm contemplating some profound thought that I'm about to deliver next, when in truth I'm just spacing out because I'm tired. <laughs> so I Got do it. apologize to anyone listening to this in advance no for not catching me at my best. All right. Okay, no well, worries. yes, let me just tell you a little bit about, <clears throat> a little about myself and about emotioneering. And I think that a abbreviated form of my bio will be up on the website so people can check out the links themselves and a little bit more information about me. But basically, I began as a screenwriter and started teaching a screenwriting class that became, on any given year, the biggest or second biggest in Los Angeles, New York, and London called Beyond Structure. The website's beyondstructure.com. And what made my teaching style unique was this thing called emotioneering. And emotioneering, uh, which is a trademark word, is about a thousand or more techniques for creating emotional engagement which have been distilled or created and which have been uh, then formulated into techniques which can be taught to other people to create increased emotional engagement. And not wanting to waste any time about this discussion of emotioneering, what I would like to recommend everyone does at this point is that there is a, there are two film clips which I supply to you and which you've now put up on your website. One is from the movie Wall-E and one is from the movie Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. If everybody can, who is listening to this can just please stop listening and see the clip from Wally, -E where this little robot, the last creature alive, so to speak, on Earth, after Earth has been abandoned because of environmental pollution, the little creature all alone fulfilling his useless mission to compact waste and make it into little cubes, doing this for eternity. Everybody can look at this clip where he enters his residence, which is the truck that he has decorated as his home, and then come back to this interview 
because I'm now going to analyze that scene, and what I'm about to say will make absolutely no sense if you haven't seen this wonderful little uh, five- or six-minute clip first. Right. So pause it right now and then come back. Go take a look. Okay, I'm going to resume here with the assumption that all of you who are listening have now seen this clip, this wonderful clip by Wally, and I'm going to analyze that clip from the point of view of emotioneering. Now, a great character is composed of seven different layers, like a sandwich. One might argue that people have these seven layers, too. After all, I discovered emotioneering by analyzing people and the arts as well. So one of these seven layers are what are the techniques that make us either like or, or identify with or empathize with a character. And any of these techniques, if you flip them upside down, will make us dislike a character. I don't know how many of these techniques exist. I'm up to about 73 at the moment. I used to think there were about 45. Then I thought there were 61. Now I think there's 73. I've been accumulating these techniques for years. Let's take a look at 13 of the techniques used in this one little section of Wally. -E. Number one, he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need anyone. Number two, he has little human-like traits that we can identify with. He collects things. So he's got a big collection of objects. That's something that people do. Most people collect something or another. Hmm. The, the next thing is he's got an aesthetic sense. He's decorated, his, he's decorated his truck with Christmas lights, and they're quite beautiful. And these are all techniques which make us identify with someone. Now, I could get into theories as to why I think these techniques work. And I'm not sure if my theories are right or not. I don't really come from the point of view of theory. When I was in university, I studied a lot of, a lot of philosophy classes. And I noticed that these philosophers would come up with all sorts of theories. They never bothered to see if their theories worked, if they were useful for anything, if they could be applied, if they made people's lives better. <laughs> they would just <laughs> invent them. And most of the philosophy students, because these theories didn't do much, were very skinny, chain-smoking, unhappy people trying to contemplate if the world actually existed. <laughs> Not, there was obviously something wrong there. What we want is philosophy that works, that makes people's lives better, that can be applied. Emotioneering has a lot of applications, as we're going to get into very soon. Let's continue with this list of empathy techniques utilized by the character Wally. He's clever. He puts his VHS tape in a toaster, and he's clever again. That's number five. When he uses the little, uh, uh, little magnifying screen to magnify his iPod and see the, see the image large. Now, number six, he's another human little, another human-like moment when he dances with the hubcap for the car, acting as if it was a hat, and he's in time to the music. Mm. Technique number seven is a technique I call the everyman technique, and everyman is my word for someone who has the frustrations of you and I, the little things that frustrate us. For instance, you have to get somewhere in traffic, but there's a traffic jam, and you're late for a meeting. Well, We've all been in that situation. If you have a character in a movie or a TV show that is in that situation, we will empathize with them. In this case, in this case, he gets this object, which is half spoon, half fork. We call it a spork, and he doesn't know where to put it. We can identify with that. It's also a very funny moment. The next one is he's lonely and longing. He sees the two people in the film holding hands with each other, and he wants to hold someone's hand. And that's what he wants for the whole movie. Of course, it's symbolic. He wants someone to love. The next thing is he, he, he has dreams. He goes out to the stars, and he looks up in the stars. And of course... This is what in film we call a setup, is preparing us for something because Eve, his true love, is going to come from those stars. Mm. The whole music sequence is a setup because we're going to come back to that music several times. That same little musical sequence and, and tape recording he made 
is going to factor into the film um, several times later. And this is very good screenwriting when you can bring things up in the beginning and in innovative ways, find ways to work them back in right. to the uh, work them back in to the movie later on. Now, in number 10 is that you, when you put the, a character in danger, that makes us empathize with them. And no sooner is he dreaming and playing some music he tape recorded than the, a sandstorm or a dirt storm appears. And he's in danger and it gets very chaotic and he has to rush back in. Technique number 11 is he helps the helpless. In this case, the helpless is the little bug that he rescues from the sandstorm and feeds. Number 12 is that he is lonely. Um, now, we thought he was self-sufficient, and he seemed pretty cheerful singing his little song. Now we find out mm, there's a little bit more to the story. He's actually a little sad. We've already seen that he, he wants someone's hand to hold. And when he rocks himself to sleep the way a little child gets rocked to sleep by their mother, we see that he's got no mother, no one to take care of him. And so he's the little baby and the mom, and he's got no one there to rock himself to sleep but himself. It's kind of a lonely moment. It's certainly not something I've ever seen in a film, and I'll never forget that image. I've come to have the, the opportunity and the great joy to become acquainted with some of the storytellers at Pixar. And they work and they work and they work on a same sequence with many, many people contributing ideas. Mm -hmm. Everyone figuring out with the director, sort of pulling together the best of all ideas and coming up with ideas by himself or herself. And, and you can tell how much thought went into this, this scene with the, uh, the truck. Because who came up with that moment of rocking themselves, him to sleep? That was pure brilliance. But everything I've been saying is pure brilliance. And the last, the 13th one, is that this whole idea of a person seeming cheerful but having a little sadness underneath is another way to make us empathize with people, with the character. Because how many times in life have we all needed to put on a happy face in whatever situation, whether it be at work or with a, a good friend, a family member, or a friend, but we're really not quite feeling as happy sure. as we pretend to be. And therefore, you can take a look at this scene, and at the end of the scene, you, are, you the audience, are emotionally identified with Wally for the rest of the movie. And look at, he's not a human. He's a little robot, and mm. not an attractive robot, and not a human-looking robot, although his eyes are very expressive. And eyes on a character are very, very important. But nonetheless, these techniques are so powerful that they can make an audience get completely emotionally identified with a character who is completely different than the audience. Mm. 13 techniques. These are the exact reasons. It's a little piece of emotioneering. Now, uh, you can get to see how, a little bit about what I'm talking about. A co when I say it's a codified series of a codified group of vast techniques, which 